Well, hey folks, quite often people write to me because they're interested in starting a little homestead or going off the grid, but they express their concerns about having a wood stove inside their home. Now, having a wood stove is certainly nothing to be fearful of, but there are precautions that you need to take to keep yourself and your family safe. I've been burning wood my entire adult life, and I have never had an issue with my wood stove. I did lose a home to a fire back in 05, but that was a beautiful spring day where my wood stove wasn't even burning. I had been having troubles with flying squirrels up in my attic. They got into the wiring and burnt my house down. I have more concerns over having an electrical fire than I am by having an issue with my wood stove. Now my stoves have been burning 24 hours a day for quite some time now. We had a warm spell earlier in the week which enabled me to let the fires go out, the stoves go cold, I got them all cleaned out. I filmed the process, now I'll review that footage and share the techniques that I use to keep my stoves working in a safe and efficient manner. Now most commonly house fires occur by having chimney fires, or having combustibles too close to the wood stove, or having something flammable fall against the wood stove when someone is asleep or not at home. It's very easy to avoid those potential hazards. A chimney fire will not occur if there is nothing built up inside the chimney that can catch fire. The chimney itself is not flammable. It's the buildup of creosote and soot that causes the problem. That can be avoided by simply keeping the chimney clean. The first thing I'm going to do is just pop this out. Now the way that chimney fires usually get started, most often it's when you're kindling a fire. A lot of times you get your kindling started, you've got the vent and the damper wide open, it's getting rolling, you might walk away from the stove, leave it unattended for a minute. Those flames get up into the pipe, and when the pipe has all of those loose fingers of soot and creosote built up, they're like little wicks. They catch on fire, and that gets drawn into the chimney. Next thing you know, you got a Roman candle on your hands. Now inside the flue pipe here, you see all those little wispy things hanging down, kind of looks like stalactites. Those are the things that catch fire really easy. Now I clean my chimney on average about once a year, sometimes more than that. But this pipe is a critical factor here and I clean this about maybe every six weeks. And that's what I'm gonna do today. Now here, I'm just gonna take this little poker and I'm going to knock all that loose stuff down into the chimney. So now to inspect the chimney from here up, the easiest thing to do, as I'm just taking a small mirror, I'm going to tuck it in here, point it upward. I got a straight shot right up and out. I can see the whole chimney. There's no clogging, no soot buildup. Just a little bit of creosote stuck on the uh, walls of the chimney, but nothing to be concerned with. And the chimney itself looks in great shape. And inside the pipe here, see that? I always screw my pipes together, one on each side of the seam and at every joint. If you have a pipe that doesn't have a very good locking seam, as this pipe expands and contracts with the heat, you don't want to have a joint come apart. And also, having them screwed together like this just makes it that much easier to remove the pipe, clean it out, and reinsert it. Now there wasn't much in that pipe at all, and that's because I clean it all the time. If I had neglected to do this and went through a few months of steady burning, there'd be a heck of a lot more built up in there and really put my house at risk for a chimney fire. So now it's all cleaned out. We're back in business. I'm gonna get it reinserted in the stove, get a fire going. 
The chimney itself didn't require any sweeping at this time, and there was only minor buildup in the pipe and thimble. This simple maintenance routine will not only keep my system operating safely and efficiently, but it will greatly reduce the chance of smoke escaping into my house while I'm tending my fire. All right, so greetings from the underworld. I'm underneath the house here. This cabin here is up on piers. There's a crawl space, and this is where my clean-out is for the chimney. Now, you're not going to be able to see much because I didn't bring a light with me, and I'm not climbing back out, but you can pretty much gather what's going to take place. There's all of the uh, creosote and soot that has fallen down in from the cleaning process. I'm going to go ahead and scoop all of that out of there. It's not something I do after every cleaning, but you don't want to leave it in there for too long because you have rain that falls down into the chimney throughout the year, and it kind of turns it into almost like concrete sometimes, and it gets hard to get it out of there. You don't want to leave it in there for too long. So I can see daylight reflecting down. So I know that it's not clogged. I can see daylight coming down, so I know I've got it. One chimney, all clean. Now most house fires that were resulting from a wood stove could have been very easily avoided by taking just a few simple precautions. Now I've been in people's houses before and seen things that make me cringe. I've seen a bunch of newspaper right here under the stove or right in front of the stove that they used to kindle the fire with. If you're burning wood, it's best to expect the unexpected. You never know what's going to happen. A lot of times when you open the stove, oxygen is getting in there. It's making the fire react and it spits out little sparks. Maybe a chunk or two of burning ember will roll out onto the floor here. You want to take precautions and be ready to handle that sort of thing. I have a poker here, right where I need it, and a little shovel. I have that shovel here because if an ember falls out of here when I'm messing with the wood, I'm right here to scoop it up, toss it back in the stove. I also have a pair of fireproof gloves right here. If I have a big chunk of burning wood that comes falling out of here, I need to react in a hurry and get it back in the stove. Now a fire extinguisher, definitely a must have, and most homeowners insurance policies make it mandatory that if you're burning wood inside your home that you have one present. Now although this is a very self-explanatory device to operate in a panic situation, it is awful hard to keep your wits about you. I highly suggest that you familiarize yourself and your whole family with the operation of this device. In addition to an extinguisher, at my homestead and my cabins, I always have a container, a large container, full of baking soda nearby. I want to have it in a container that has a large enough mouth so I can reach in and grab a handful of this stuff and throw it on the flames if I have a fire burning out of control. Even in a panic situation, everyone can keep their wits about them long enough to dump something like this on a fire. It's not complicated at all. Now, if you have a roof that is climbable and you have a chimney fire, as long as that chimney fire hasn't been burning for too long and you can get up on the roof, dumping baking soda will put that chimney fire out in short order. Now I can't overemphasize the importance of having some way of extinguishing a fire. And filling a jug full of baking soda is such a small investment, there's really no excuse not to have one. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and you found the information to be beneficial to you. By all means, please click the subscribe button so that you can follow along and not miss any future updates. In part two, I'll be discussing the cleaning and caring of wood-burning cook stoves. I'll speak from my opinions on the different types of chimneys and talk a little bit more about fire prevention as well. 
I'll put the link to part two right in the description box right below. So all the best to you, and God bless. Oh.